Hello everybody. Hi. How y'all doing? I hope y'all are having a wonderful day. Um, I know it's late, but I'm doing it. And either you're going to watch it or you won't. And that's all right. <laughs> I had all kinds of technical difficulties last week. So, you know, I'm just trying to put it on up there. Anyway, this is the recap for Ambitions. Okay, y'all, so this one started off with Stephanie being in her feelings because she's getting all these text messages. Now, I'm guessing that they are from Greg Peters or somebody from his camp. And basically, time is up. She has not been able to get Rondell to sign the paperwork in order for them to move forward with English Rose. And without that, you know what I'm saying... <sighs> They might have to jump through a whole lot more hoops and just have to hope that eminent domain and all that stuff, you know, prevents her from being able to do what she needs to do since she wasn't able to secure all of those signatures and all the other stuff, you know, happened. Y'all, it's just a lot. So anyway, and I'm glad that Rondell is having a, a moment to be able to be like, okay, some ain't right. I don't know what it is, but I'm going to hold off. And that's what she's doing. She's holding off on signing the paperwork. She's good. I'm, I'm really glad that she listens to her gut. So anyway, y'all. Oh, I keep getting all these random notifications. Anyway, y'all know Beta New Electric was supposed to be coming to Atlanta. It's going to you know, provide a lot of amazing job opportunities for hundreds, if not thousands of people. So the Soror who, you know, has been blackmailed by Stephanie. She came in and she met with the mayor. And, you know, of course, she was there with the husband because he's the one who was going to be able to do all of that because of all his connections and how high up <laughs> on the food chain he is. What happened was he came in there to let him know that they are going a different route and that Beta New Electric will be coming to Charlotte, North Carolina, and not Atlanta. So he's like, what? Why? He like went all the way off. Like, Evan is very, very, very upset about it. And so, you know, the Soror got in her feelings and was all rah, rah. And she was like, you could thank your wife for that. And I'm just like, oh my gosh. Like, he is furious. So anyway... Y'all, Amara is in her office and she on the phone trying to, you know, still do what she need to do in order to see what's going on with this case. So she get off the phone and her supervisor come in. Her boss looking like, okay, so what's going on with your husband and the dude that you was working with before, Damien? And so she was like, um, nothing. Like, um, I don't know what you're talking about. You know, I used to work with him. And that's it. And so she was like, I asked you before, was there anything else I needed to know outside of the fact that y'all work together? And of course, she's been filled in on the fact that Titus was arrested for beating him up, even though we all know that's not what happened. And, you know, she was just like, you know, is there anything else you need to tell me? So she knows about the affair and all this other stuff. And so she was like, well, I don't know what's going on. He told me that he was going back to Birmingham, so he won't be an issue anymore. So she was like, I don't, I don't even know what you're talking about. He's on leave right now because of everything that happened or whatever. So she was just like looking like, I don't understand what you're talking to me about because he told me that he was going back to Birmingham. So Amara... I'm like, girl, you should have known that he was not just going to be like, oh, I gave up and go back to Birmingham. As crazy as he was just rolling up on you. Why would you think he just go leave and go on and admit defeat and be done like that when he's telling you, I will do anything to be with you? Girl, anyway. <laughs> so Bella ended up coming by the restaurant looking for her mama to apologize and to give her a gift. So Rondell was like, your mama ain't here. She was going around the restaurant and not being herself and all sad and looking all crazy in the face. So I sent her home. So then she ended up giving her some advice, letting her know that, you know, a lot of people wish they had their mama and all this other stuff, which is very much so true. And even though her mama been gone for like 35 years, it's still, you know, that's your mama. You only get one. 
And so, you know, she's trying to make it seem like she now knows the era of her ways and that she shouldn't have done that and all this other stuff. And I'm just like, girl, you trifling because you got it made. You don't have to pay for child care. And if she, if she slide her mama a little something, I, I mean, I'm pretty sure she has it. All these football players and all these other people who've had money that have been in and out of her life, she should have enough to slide her mama. And when she gets her dresses and stuff done, all the dresses and stuff that she has made for people, when they pay her for her services, I'm pretty sure she has, you know, decent amount of money for that. Even though her mama is working where she's working, you know what I'm saying? I know there ain't no money like that. So she should be sliding her mama some money for taking care of Joaquin. So, you know what I'm saying? She got it made. You ain't paying for child care. You know, she the grandmama. So, girl, you you better be glad. So, I guess eventually she gonna find her mama and properly apologize for the way that she acted because she was trifling. It's like, I understand that you mad at Evan, but dang, girl, don't be, don't be getting mad at your mama for wanting better than what you had. You didn't have your daddy. And she was just thinking of her grandchild. It's all about the child in the end. That's what a lot of people fail to realize that when it comes to stuff like this, it's about the child. It ain't about your feelings about the daddy. It ain't about your feelings about the mama. It is about the child and what impact y'all's bickering and all that is going to do in order to, you know, just either it's going to mold them in a negative way or it's going to mold them in a positive way. So, yeah. Anyway, Stephanie is in this meeting, right? And she's just sitting there. You could tell she's going crazy. Everybody is in there like kind of talking to one another and talking over one another and going back and forth. And it's a room full of real estate investors. Everybody is in their feelings because they were on board to try to do something with Greg Peters' um, company. They have been invested in his, you know, they, they, they're invested and so they're looking like, okay, what in the world's going on with this Eng English Rose situation? And, you know, this one woman in particular, I think her name was Lucinda. She kept setting it off every single time when she did kind of try to get everybody to, you know, respond and just calm down and get into some kind of orderly fashion. She was just... How do we know we're going to get a, a return on our investment? How do we know that this is going to actually pan out the way you said it was? This woman eventually read Stephanie and was like, I don't understand what's going on. Well, really, I do understand what's going on because before, whenever we made deals, the deals went through your father. Maybe the problem is because you're the one trying to broker broker these deals. I, she read her. I was here for it. <laughs> here for it but i mean stephanie in the end did tell the truth which was you know in the past when things have happened why are you trying to make it seem like you know even though i am an entity i am a part of the company why are you trying to make it seem as though you don't think you're going to get a return on your investment and so she asked her you know before when we had businesses when we brokered deals for y'all before weren't y'all able to still get a return on your investment and so, you know, in a way, these people are like, okay, that was then, this is now. And like we said before, which was, I said what I said, your daddy was the one handling it before, and look what we at now. Because this should have been off the ground. They should have been broke ground and been doing what they need to do. And, like, you ain't showing us nothing. Like, she is has been really all talk and all seriousness. She's been more talk than anything else. No action. So, these people looking at her like, okay, well, um... We'll give you a little time, but if you don't do what you, if you don't deliver, then um, we pull it out. So she was like, you don't have to worry about that. I'm just like, girl, you don't get someone to sit down. Anyway, um, Bella, Bella actually stopped by Stephanie's office at some point to talk to her because she wanted her to go over her contracts to see if she had any rights. And so she was like, first of all, you should have came to me before you signed. And so when she found out who the contract was through, she was like, looking like, wait a minute, how did you get a contract like this? Despite the fact that it's what a provisional type of a deal or whatever. And so 
she was like, I'm just good at my job. And of course she did mention the dude and you could imply very easily that, you know, that was a big part of it too. Cause he's here for her. So she was like, oh, okay. So she was like, can you look over it for me and see if I'll have any rights? Because she just wants to make sure that if anything were to pop off, where they just like, okay, we like what we saw, but we want to keep everything you didn't gave us. She don't want that to happen. So she was like, okay. She was like, even if I don't have enough time, I will drop it off, you know, to somebody else that works under me and let them handle that. And I'll get back to you. So I was like, okay, at least she's going to actually help, even though she don't know the, you know, situation with her sleeping with her man and some more. Anyway, um, y'all, Titus has accepted Rondell's uh, proposal, which is to take on her case. She's trying to get all that stuff in order because y'all know what's going on. She hasn't been able to get Greg Peters off her back. This English Rose stuff seems to... It might actually go through and then the banks is going to end up getting gentrified and stuff is going to be taken away, torn down, rebuilt, and it's just going to be completely different than what it was when she grew up. No historical markers, you know, at least some of the buildings could be saved and have historical marker markers like the restaurant. It just seems like it's more of a possibility of that happening than, you know, something great coming out of a situation. And uh, I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. But Titus, at first, he was like, you know, I don't want to be tied to that. You know, I already got my own stuff going on and my own personal stuff going on. Purefoy, the company already has its own stuff going on. So, and they don't really, I don't think they'll be here for me doing no pro bono work. So, you know, at first she was like, oh, well, you know, I understand. You know, I just figured that I would, you know, come by and ask you because apparently he extended, you know, his services before and she declined because I guess she thought she would be able to do it on her own. But now she sees that, you know, some things have happened that has changed and, sh and she's not going to be able to get it that way. So she was like, you know, just thank you, you know, for taking the time to talk to me and whatever. So eventually... He has a moment and he's thinking about it and he ends up taking her up on her deal. And tell me why he got off work one day. He hadn't even left the building. Damien is in the building waiting on him. And he was like, look, man, nobody got time for this. This time we are in front of cameras. Ain't nobody going to be able to doctor up no films. You ain't going to be able to doctor up the um none of the images to make it look like nothing happened or nothing's going to disappear because we're here on my turf. So what is this all about? So he was like, you know, I ain't here to start nothing with you. You know, I just felt like you should know the truth because I don't think you know. So he told him like, you know, your wife probably told you that we were only together one time, but that wasn't the case. We'd have been together way more than once. And, you know, all I need to know, all I need to really tell you is that all the information that you need, I got receipts and I've sent them to your work email. So he done sent all this evidence to his work email, voice recordings, text messages, pictures. I mean, what, whatever, all kinds of random receipts, right? So he has, you could tell that he has this feeling of, okay, maybe some stuff that went down. Hopefully it's a lie. You could tell he's kind of mixed. <laughs> mixed feelings on what the situation could be, what the outcome is going to be. Y'all, this man pulled that information up and when they finally came back to a scene with him, he was at the house, sitting in the dark, waiting on Amara to come home. That key opened the lock. She went inside and she was like, hey babe, what are you doing here sitting in the dark? And she's trying to talk to him. He ain't really trying to hear her like that. He was like, um, yeah, so you told me that y'all have only been together once. And, you know, all this other stuff. And so she said, no, I told you that I made one mistake. And he was like, don't be trying to mince words. 
I was like, no. Y'all, he ended up playing a voice recording of her saying that he likes her. He She misses him touching her, holding her and all this other stuff. And that she's, she's thinking of leaving him and he's never around and all this other stuff. She was like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. You were never around. He was like, I was working. I was like, oh y'all, it is too much. Like, it got real, real quick. And so she was like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, y'all. He already had some bags packed. And after he played that evidence for her, he politely walked out of the door. And she started crying. And he had broken a... Uh -um, picture of the two of them together like before she even came in the house like he is tired so yeah that was just the air thing that happened this episode i hope y'all enjoyed this even though it was late thank everybody who has subscribed thank you for the people who have been commenting under my videos who like it all that good stuff anyway y'all have a good one and i'll see y'all later